I'm Christine Johnson and welcome to um, NBS AE Road Career Focus Friday. Today we are here talking to Mar Marlo Carroll. She is a second AD. Um, she's worked on tons and tons of stuff that I'm sure all of you um, have watched. She's worked on uh, Homeland, um, The Path. She's worked on Birdman. She worked on The Marvelous Miss Maisel. Um, I could go on and on, but I am going to introduce you to her first and let her tell us a little bit about herself. So Marla, welcome. Thank you for doing this today. For having me. So could you tell us a little bit about um, how you got started in this business and why you wanted to get started in this business? Um, yeah, of course. So I, I was never a very good student of academia. Um, I grew up on Long Island, very close to the city. I started going to like live TV events uh, in high school. And I just really liked the set environment that I was sort of experiencing. Um, and then I, in high school, found the TV class and did that. And then when I went to college, I, you know, went to a TV uh, communications program um, and really it was just what I was passionate about. I wasn't necessarily doing well in math or history, but I would go to the TV studio and lock myself away for 12 hours with the people, the camera, the writing, all of, you know, everything that we could do to just, you know, make, make a story. Um, and I thought um, I was very happy with that. And then I got very lucky um, in that I was in your class, Christine, and they were shooting an independent film very near to where I was studying school looking for interns. And I just jumped in it, essentially. Yeah. And you did something a little unconventional, really. You jumped in. You, they loved you. And you decided to leave school for a semester, right? Yes, so I left school. I, I realized fast I could not do both. Um, it just the amount of hours that they needed me to, and the amount of hours it uh, would cost to actually have an impact on what they were doing um, did not allow me to go to class at 12 p.m. or 11. So I, I did. I, I paused. I hit the pause button and went full speed with them. Uh, I think it started, we started shooting around March. Mm -hmm. So um, the summertime, I did a couple of other small films in the city with them and then went back to school in August. Yeah. And the director you worked with there, was she was up for an Academy Award, wasn't she? Um, she Courtney Hunt, she was up for an Academy Award for original screenplay, I believe. Uh, it was for writing. And then the star of that movie, Melissa Leo, uh, was nominated for Best Actress, I believe, that year. And uh, you know that film, when it came to town, nobody knew what it was. Nobody knew who these people were, if it was legit, anything. I kind of took a gamble uh, with a few other students, and um, it ended up winning the Sundance Film Festival. So that that it it did very well. So that was a nice credit to have. Yeah. So, I mean, on that vein, let me just, let's talk about that just a minute. So you basically, you said, okay, this is my dream. I'm going to just jump in and I'm going to see where it takes me. And it really actually paid off, didn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, so you went back to, you went back to school, got your degree. Yeah. That was important for me. It was also important. You know, I wanted, you know, my, my grandfather and my father and my mother, everyone would have been broken hearted. I was close. I think I was like two or three semesters away from finishing. So, you know, it, it, it was definitely worth the opportunity. But for me personally, I always knew that I, I wanted my degree. That was something I did want. Yeah. But you don't think that it would be um, unadvisable for anybody to take a pause if they had that opportunity? Absolutely not. Okay. And you kept in touch with those people too. And that's how you started making connections? Yes. So when I did get my degree, um, I was messaging and e at the time probably emailing and talking to um, who was the second second AD on 
Frozen River, um, was now the key PA on a show called Rescue Me. And I just, I just was in touch with him. He didn't tell me what show. He said, can you be here at this time? Uh, and it was Rescue Me and just kept meeting everybody, talking to people. And they had, you know, told this person my name and passed on my number. And it just, you know, it just lit up. Yeah. That's fantastic. I mean, yeah. so what do you, so when you got on the PA track, you have options there, don't you, to go one way or another? You have a lot of options. Okay. So which option did you pick? Um, for me, I chose to stay the course and go the AD route. I wanted to, um, uh, you know, be more on the managerial side. Um, but, you know, when you're in that environment, you don't just have the ADs at your disposal. You have the camera technicians, the electricians, the grips, the, you know, the art, the art department, like there's just, you really have an opportunity to see what everybody's doing, network and see kind of where you want to do, see what you want to do. Okay. So if you, if you could give somebody one tip, and I know what you're going to say because you say it all the time. But if you give somebody one tip of like, what is the best thing to do? Like you start out as a PA, what puts you on the map as the person that everybody wants? Kill them with kindness. Be, you know, be. You really have to be likable. And it sounds crazy but like what likable is like it, that being it that simple but what likable is is just ready willing and able eager you know um showing up early showing up early definitely i mean on time is late in our industry so yep. you have to early um showing up early um reading the call sheet knowing what we're shooting take you know, pay attention to my, my biggest pet peeve and something that's very noticeable when you're doing it is knowing what's going on around you. Be aware. Don't shout to the guy, you know, at the catering truck that you see, you're excited to see, but you have the director right next to you. You might not, you know, realize, realize what's happening around you, realize the conversations for, for the AD department. One of the things that you know, we do is we're, we're kind of spies a little bit. It's a lot of listening, paying attention, putting your ear a little bit closer um, to a conversation, um, read the script. Um, you know, there's a lot of preparation that you can do. And yeah, you might do all of those things. And then as a PA, you might be two blocks away from the camera doing, you know, some sort of a lockup. And that's a big part of what we do also, but it definitely doesn't hurt when you're, you know, when you're prepared and uh, you know who people are, that small things like that, just knowing, just if you don't know who somebody is, hey, I'm looking for our art director, John. Um, say, hey, John, like you don't know who John is, John, like proactive. Yeah, proactive. Um, so when you decided you were going to take the AD route, what exactly do you have to do to get into the DGA? Um, I was a PA on multiple movies and television shows for about five or six years. Um, the requirement is I believe 600 days on a call sheet. Um, I did it with a little bit more than 600 days because the truth is, is you can, you can work at those 600 days really fast, especially now so much has been shooting. Um, but if you're not ready to be a manager on set, which is what we are, you're not going to get hired. And the second you submit that book, you're also paying to be part of that union. You're not getting any income for it. You don't want to do that too soon. Um, so I, one of the things I tell a lot of, um, you know, the PAs that work for, with me, is uh, don't do it too soon. Do it when some you're getting. You're, you should already be getting work, um, because you can. You can, you can work as an AD with just your book submitted, 
but not actually be a member of the union. So it can kind of um, pause the clock for payments for you. Okay. And so when, so you've worked on, tell us some of the things you've worked on that I didn't mention yet. Um, well, uh, a movie that I worked on uh, in 2000, it's so crazy, 10 years ago now, in 2010 was a film called Extreme, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close. Um, and that was with Tom Hanks and Sandra Bullock, but um, it was with a director uh, named Stephen Daldry, who I was just pondering today, like who I really enjoyed working with. And um, he is definitely one of those directors that um, was very pleasant, very pleasant to be around. Uh, and, what, and so, and then you've, you've worked a lot of episodic television, you've worked movies, and do you have a preference or movies. do you not care? Movies. Movies. Um, and the no. reason for that is time. Um, studios usually allow, you know, you, and directors want to shoot one scene, maybe two scenes, depending on the location, the page count, what's going on, um, in a day. Whereas in television, they'll throw 12 pages at you, get this done today. And I do a lot of the background work, so I'll set the background and, um, do all that stuff so it's hard for me in television to not really have the pleasantry of time to have a rehearsal where a director will at least give you that and tv you don't get the same amount of time i find okay i mean i know that you've been you have like shared stuff with classes of mine that you've done like a lot of stuff with the path with uh, special effects and green screen work and um and that's stuff that you're setting up as well yeah yeah Definitely. And, and all of that is just being part of a team and talking to your VFX supervisor, your director, just kind of knowing what they want, get in their head a little bit, and, and then it's easy. So, so if you had advice to give anybody right now that was looking to get into the industry or somebody that's in the industry and might be struggling a little bit to find work, what would you suggest? Um, if you're if you're already in the industry, if you if you've had some time on set and you're looking to get work, I would say just you gotta keep reminding people that you're there. You text me, I'm available. I'm uh, looking. This was my last thing. This might be who you know. That if I don't know you, I can call that person and just be like, this guy any good or is this girl any good? Um, that that's how you know you'll get me to pass the name on to I have the, the PAs usually hire the PAs so I'll just pass the name to the PAs and, and you know they'll give you a call so if you're already in the industry just keep reminding us you're there if you're not in the industry find us there's websites um, I think the DGA has a don't think you have to be a member to view it but there are production lists um, that you can find and you can call production offices. You can, um, you know, if you see, if you see a shooting on the street, if you happen to live, especially in New York, but if you see a shooting on the street, say hi. Um, do, if you can, uh, talk to a casting agent, even if you're not an actor, maybe you can get a day of background work um, and see, sort of get a foot in that way. Um, there's so, there's honestly, there's so many things, um, so many ways that you can find yourself on a set of any kind. And what I love about the film industry is there really is a place for everybody, no matter what you do. You're good with numbers, be an accountant. You're a school teacher. We have minor kids that need to learn. Um, you know, you like to paint houses, build, that's, you know, there's, there's, there's so many ways, so. That's, yeah, that's, that is very true because I always tell people like if there's an interest you have like cooking, you can, you can go into, you know, Improv catering. Right. So it's, it doesn't just have to be like production work. So the other thing is talk to, talk a little bit about you. You've been touching on it the whole time we've been talking about networking. How important is networking? And um, if somebody says, oh, I'm not really good at networking, what is your response to them? Network is 100% uh, 
it's everything. Um, it's how all of us get our work. I mean, you can join a union and have your name on a list, but you'll get a call if you know somebody way before they look at that list to see who's available. Um, so I would say um, always stay in touch with people, definitely network, it is everything. Um, it's the only way that I get my work. Um, and then if you're not good at networking, we live in a day and age where email and text messaging is so regular. Just say hi, saw you here, not good at this, but I wanted to let you know I'm interested in available, whatever. Um, there's no excuse to not stay in touch with what we have available. You know, it's just. Yeah, absolutely. So with one of the, I know that you worked on a movie because I just wanted to touch on this because I know that you said you enjoyed working with the director on Birdman. Oh, um, yes, Alejandro. Um, yeah, he was a very, that movie was a very different movie to work on. I don't know um, if you're not familiar with Birdman. It was shot in a very interesting way. Um, they did a, a technique called stitching with VFX, so you'll end the, so you'll get basically it all looks like one long camera shot the whole movie. It's not, um, but it looks that way. Um, he is a very particular man, very particular. Knows exactly what he doesn't want, and definitely knows what he wants. Um, he. It's interesting because you can't talk about Alejandro without talking about Chivo, who is his DP, Emmanuel, I'm gonna butcher his last name, but people call him Chivo. Um, those two are on that film where they were married in their minds, for the most part. They, there was times where they would disagree, but, um, but yeah, he, he knew what he wanted. What we would do was we would rehearse for half of the day so for about six hours we would just rehearse then we would break for lunch then we would bring the actors out rehearse again and then we would probably do maybe up to five takes six takes and that was our day every day because it was all about one particular shot each day for the most part and how long did it take you to to shoot that movie uh that was probably six weeks six weeks of shooting because that yeah. one best picture didn't it yeah it did yeah yeah so you've worked on some pretty some pretty good things marla <laughs> yeah 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 well that's awesome well i just we want to thank you so much for um uh you know for talking to us and i'm gonna kind of open it up a little bit see if anybody has any questions that um that they might want to ask and um you know i'll let them ask you and you can you can tell them all about what you've been doing okay marlo I've, um i have a kind of a selfish question i love the marvelous mrs Maisel. <laughs> is um is that is that going to be coming well it's tough to tell what what's going to come back or not but what's your, what's your sense about the future of, uh, of that show good very good yeah, I think it's definitely, um, it's Amazon's baby. They, mm -hmm. they will do everything that they can to nurture that project. Um, and so I haven't heard much about it recently. Um, Andrew, had, had, had you heard anything about Maisel? Yeah. No word, but uh, I, I know Every time I've been on that set, it's, it's always very, it reminds me, it's a period show and they have the ability so quickly to turn the city over in a way that is really cool. I did, uh, the last time I worked on it, we did a USO, a USO um, event and she does, she comes and she does the whole thing. And uh, the people there, the people on that show, to make that kind of stuff happen, it's just, they're on top of it. And Amy- The, the art direction is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It really is. 
Um, I actually, I, I do have another question. Uh, you chose the, uh, basically the management route from being a PA up, up to, uh, through the, through the ADs. Um, can you just describe, uh, actually for, for students who will be uh, watching this episode, uh, what are some of the, uh, different tasks as you work your way up, like, uh, second, second, um, AD and second AD and AD, you know, what, what, what kinds of responsibilities come with each level? Sure. Um, well, I'd probably start from the top, which, so a first AD would be the director's right hand. The first AD is uh, prepping the longest with the director. What they do is they break down the script, break down, they create the schedule, they work with locations and the art department and, um, you know, all the departments to see what can be ready when actor availability, all of that stuff to create the schedule of the project. Um, and then they're the director's right hand on set. To go along with that would be the second AD, who is, who is, when you think of a second AD, it's not all that they do, but the one thing that, the one document that any show will have is the call sheet. And that is, that is produced by the second AD. And um, what a second AD does is they'll go through everything that they did in prep, which is break down all of the elements of a, of a scene, all of the elements of, um, of the next shooting day. So, and they'll create a call sheet. Um, so this scene requires the blue vase. Hey, props, you still got that blue vase? Great. Um, how much time do you need in makeup for this person so I can call this actor in you know, at whatever time. And, and so there, while we're working on today, the second AD usually is, well, is working on tomorrow, but um, is also dealing with daily tasks of today, you know, making sure that actors are showing up on time, that they're getting into hair and makeup. If there's a, if there's a thunderstorm coming and we're outside, um, what can we do next? How do we, you know, how do we keep today moving as well? So. The second AD is always very busy. And then the second second AD um, works on set with the first AD, basically managing everything, making sure that the PAs are all doing what um, you know need to be done. And the PAs do a lot. Um, and then you're managing the crew, keeping them informed, letting them know what's going on you're in those conversations with the director, you're hearing, I want to look this way first. I'm going to look, be looking over there. Hmm, I see a camera cart over there. That's not going to work. Uh, hey, camera department, uh, we got to move that camera, camera cart. We're going to be looking there in the next shot. It's funny, I use the camera department as an example because they're the ones that always know pretty much where the camera is going to be pointing. So they don't always <laughs> like tell them. Um, but, you know, just basically being the eyes and ears for the set and uh and then background which is always fun for me i i love give me 50 guys you want a crowded room okay cool you be over here you're gonna be walking this way you're gonna be planted over here just you know having that it's a little bit of me being able to be creative um which i enjoy i hope that answers okay, great that sounds good thank you <laughs> some of it of course there's always room every everybody works differently especially regional ad's regionally work very different. In California, it's different than in New York. So, um, you know, I, I have not worked on the West Coast, but I have heard. So, and then in Canada, there's no second second, it's a third. So, mm -hmm. it's all. For, for your backgrounds, I mean, do you have, do you have extras waiting to be used in the background or how, how does that work? Um, usually, it, it depends on the scene. If it's like a, if we're shooting on a street in New York, probably I wouldn't have anybody waiting. Um, if, if it's like a particular scene in a, let's do like the spy scene, uh, like on Homeland where you have two spies sitting on a bench and nobody's supposed to be able to listen into their conversation. I might have 20, you know, background artists available to me but I might just use five, throw them in the distance, walk away from camera, don't let us see you, but let's just have some of that movement. Um, uh, and then some scenes are written like Orange is the New Black is a show that will, that will write specifically like this one person comes in and that's it, or you just have 
you know, that, that one person, and it will be written that way. So you wouldn't, you know, you would bring that many people in for, for what the scene calls for, yeah. you know. Because I, I, I see with some episodic TV, um, especially uh, walk and talk scenes where they, they, they're really choreographed though, with people walking between yes. desks and through corridors and stuff like that. That's, uh, that's a lot of work, it seems to it me. It's a lot of work. And thankfully, that's what's so cool about what we do, especially in the AD department, is because we talk to everybody. We talk to all the departments. And for me, my right-hand man and the man or woman for uh, a scene like that is the camera operator. It's mm. the steady cam guy. Usually, we'll just say it's a steady cam shot. Sure. Him and I, or her and I, are, are working side by side with that. It's, that person is setting background as much as I am. Because, you know, the other thing is, you really, you, I mean, yes, you really do have to choreograph that. And so, you know, I might have ideas in my head that I think are going to be really cool, but then I'm being told, Marlo, you're crazy. That's not going to look, that's not going to look good, but I don't realize it until, you know, we get the shot. Great. Thank you. Yeah. If you were uh, giving advice to somebody who was graduating and they were heading for um, a place where they could be around production, is the answer still head to LA? Um, for a long time, no. For a long time, it was New York or Atlanta or Michigan. Um, but it's starting to pick up in California again. So the answer is not no to LA. But from what I understand, it's more of a development area. So if you want to be a writer um, or an actor, Definitely on LA. I think if you want to be in production, yes, yes on California. Um, it is still the hub, but there are so many cities now that are offering tax incentives to studios to create work. And, uh, you know, you're seeing New York's always been big, but new, I mean, Louisiana has been getting hot. Uh, new Mexico is getting hot. So, yeah. Right now, it's it's a hard question too because of what's going on. But yeah. yeah. Any other questions? No. Well, thank you so much, Marlo. If anybody wants to check out all the stuff Marlo's worked on, go on IMDb, check out her profile, Marlo Carroll with two L's. Don't forget the two L's. Um, and you can check out all the stuff that she's worked on. She's worked on tons and tons and tons of stuff and uh she's going to continue that um as soon as i guess you guys know what's going on with after this after the pandemic but um we appreciate you guys tuning in thank you thank you thank you marla for taking time out of your day to talk to us and to uh share your experience with us we really appreciate it thanks for tuning in to uh nbs ae row career focus friday i hope everybody has a great weekend bye-bye <laughs>